During World War II, development of nuclear weapons was paramount for many of the world's top physicists. Each one of these nuclear weapons required a core of plutonium that measured around 3.5 inches in diameter. Two cores were used in the nuclear bombing of Japan to stop World War II, but there was a third core ready to be used when needed. When the war ended, the core became the main testing subject for physicists as they continued to improve the United States nuclear arsenal. This third core was a 14-pound subcritical mass of plutonium that measured 3.5 inches in diameter. It was also responsible for the direct deaths of two physicists and many more who died years later from cancer. This destructive past earned it its nickname, the Demon Core. The Demon Core was designed with a small safety margin, only about 5%. This was to ensure that it went off in the event of its use. The 14-pound radioactive sphere consisted of two plutonium-gallium hemispheres and a center ring designed to keep neutron flux from jetting out of the core during the implosion. On August 21, 1945, the first incident occurred. Physicist Harry Daglian was performing experience on the neutron reflectors around the core. He was working alone with only a security guard standing watch about 12 feet away. While moving protective tungsten carbide bricks around the core assembly, Daglian accidentally dropped one on the core and due to the low safety factor, the core quickly slipped into supercriticality. Daglian quickly moved the brick off of the assembly, but it was too late. He received a fatal dose of radiation and died 25 days later from radiation poisoning. The security guard survived, but died 33 years later from what was likely radiation-induced leukemia. After this incident, testing on the core persisted. On May 21, 1946, the lead physicist for the project, Louis Sloten, and seven other personnel were in the Los Alamos laboratory conducting experiments on the Demon Core to determine its critical point. Louis Sloten was slated to leave Los Alamos for other work, so he had begun training physicist Alan C. Graves to take his post. Sloten was preparing Graves to use the core in the Operation Crossroads nuclear test scheduled in a month at Bikini Atoll. Graves needed to know how to place two half-spheres of beryllium acting as neutron reflectors around the core. This action involved manually lowering the top section onto the core using a small thumb hole. If the two neutron reflectors fell into the wrong position, allowing them to close completely, instantaneous formation of a critical mass could occur, resulting in rapid power excursion and the release of lethal doses of radiation. This action was tedious enough as it was, but making it worse, Sloten had developed an unapproved protocol of how the process should work. In his process, the physicist would hold the top hemisphere of the neutron reflectors with the thumb of one hand, while the other hand held a small screwdriver between the halves to keep them from coming together. On the day of the accident, Sloten's screwdriver slipped ever so slightly while lowering the reflectors and a sudden flash of blue light and heat was released across his entire body. The core became instantaneously supercritical and everyone in the room was hit with an intense burst of neutron radiation lasting just a half second. Luckily, Sloten acted fast and flicked the top reflector on the floor, keeping the reaction from continuing. His positioning also shielded others in the room from more lethal doses of radiation. He unfortunately received a lethal dose of 1000 rad neutron and 114 gamma radiation in under one second. He died nine days later from radiation poisoning. Graves was watching the process over Sloten's shoulder and was luckily partially shielded by Sloten's body. He was hospitalized for several weeks, but survived the incident. He later died of a heart attack and it is unclear whether the heart attack that killed him was a result of radiation or if it was simply genetics. Along with Graves and Sloten, six other people were in the room, all suffering minor injuries with only one dying of what was likely radiation-caused leukemia 19 years later. The Demon Core was soon melted down with its materials recycled for use in other cores, but its destructive and deadly past lives on.